Gents, excuse me, sorry. Well, if we can make a start. Uh, first and foremost, uh, welcome to Barcelona. My name is Ed Scott. I'm the EuroLeague Basketball Sports Director. Uh, we'll quickly present the people in the room. Uh, I have three colleagues from EuroLeague Basketball here with me that will be helping us over this uh, these four days. To my left here is Marco Planins. Hi. Marco will be helping us with all of our transportation and video recording needs. At the back of the room we have Goran Sasic, who you've all met on the way in. Uh, Goran is the primary person responsible for the mastermind coaching seminars and clinic. So any questions, any doubts, etc., uh, Goran is, is the man to talk to. And next to Goran is Lucas Cafati, business development executive. Uh, Luca will be helping us with numerous operational aspects. Uh, in the, the clinic this, this, uh, over the next four days. Uh, before we make a start, you will have all received the latest copy of the program this afternoon uh, when you came in. We will attempt to stay as close as possible to the program, so please respect the times, particularly the transportation times. There are buses that will leave from the front of the hotel and from outside the main entrance of the arena to move us back and forth every time. Uh, Marco will be responsible for ensuring that the buses are on time, uh, but each of us will be individually responsible for ensuring that we're on the bus on time so that we can leave. Uh, regarding meals, all of the lunches during the clinic will be in the arena, and all of the dinners will be here in the hotel. We'll eat in the central garden, which is on the ground floor in the central area of the hotel. And it is the same location where all breakfast meals will be served. Uh, beyond that, uh, before I hand over to the first of four very distinguished guests that we have to impart the clinic, um, if you have any questions at any time, please don't hesitate primarily to contact Goran at the back of the room uh, or any one of uh, the three of us who are also here. And I would like to also mention that for the sessions this afternoon, uh, the sessions will be given in Spanish with translation into English by myself. Uh, for all of the sessions, if you have any questions for the coaches, if you could please make a note of them. And then at the end of the session, we'll always have a few minutes for questions and answers at the end. And so please do uh, ask everything you would like to know, you would like to clarify at that point. Uh, we have a microphone, uh, so when you have a question, if you please just raise your hand and get the microphone so that everybody can hear the questions. Uh, any questions so far on the administrative aspects? Okay. Well, to my right, for those of you that uh, do not recognize him, is uh, Coach Aito Garcia Reneses. Uh, Coach Garcia Reneses joined the Euroleague Basketball Institute Mastermind Coaching Program in 2009. Uh, Coach has won a multitude of European and national titles over a very lengthy career here in Spain, uh, coaching for many, many years at FC Barcelona and more recently at teams such as DKV Juventud, where he worked with young players like Rudy Fernandez or Ricky Rubio, who have now blossomed thanks to the years they spent with coach uh, in their formative time into some elite level players and most recently at Unicaja uh, also in the EuroLeague. So coach's first session will be about practice planning and so without further ado, uh, coach Garcia Reneses. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. It's a pleasure to see some of you again and those of you that are new faces for the first time. I'm going to attempt to transmit everything that we'd like to in this uh, first session uh, and hopefully we'll do so. Están dentro de una misma filosofía. 
Uh, this evening, the two sessions that we're going to cover, both practice planning and scouting, form part of the same philosophy. And this philosophy is probably quite different to many coaches working at the senior elite level who are perhaps more interested in tactical aspects than they are in the development of their team and their players. I'd like to emphasize that this is my personal philosophy and the one that I have used over many, many years coaching. It is not one that you necessarily will have to adopt, but perhaps one that will help you to reflect upon your own coaching philosophy. Esta filosofía de cómo entrenar a lo largo de una temporada se puede hacer tanto con equipos de jóvenes como con equipos de jugadores mayores. This type of philosophy can be applied during the course of a season, both when working with senior level, high level players, and also when working with youth programs. However, I think it's very important that this type of philosophy is applied when working with youth players, as the development of the youth players is has much more uh, potential and much more uh, a lengthier road than with senior players. One of the things basic for me to be able to train a team is the pre-temporada. One of the most important things for me when coaching a team is the pre-season. The pre-temporada is not only to put in form the players, but to teach them a type of baloncest that is the one I want to practice. The preseason should not only be for players to get into good physical shape, but also to begin to teach them the type of basketball that we wish to impart. During the preseason, we will talk about everything with our team. We will start from a, a, a starting point, but then we will talk about how we wish to defend, how we wish to attack, how we wish to run the floor, how we wish to rebound. But we won't talk about it verbally. We will talk about it by using specific drills to transmit what we wish to our players. For younger players, it's particularly important as they're progressing from perhaps a cadet under 16 or junior under 18 level to a senior level for the first time. And so it is important that they understand what is being requested, what is being required of them at, at the senior level. We should really differentiate the players between young players and older players, but actually differentiate between players who are willing and wish to learn and those players that wish to demonstrate what they already know. During the course of my career, many people have observed or commented about players that I have worked with who started and I've taken as from, for example, cadet or junior level and have progressed through to being senior level players and, for example, representing their national team. Sin embargo, yo no marco las diferencias entre este jugador joven y este jugador 
el veterano, este tiene que aprender y este no tiene que aprender. Para mí, si todos aprenden, luego los trato por igual, en el sentido de que si un joven es mejor que un veterano, el joven va a jugar más. Pero no es decir, doy oportunidad a un joven. El joven se tiene que ganar la oportunidad. We don't differentiate between the youth players and the veteran players when it comes to giving opportunities. Everybody must work hard to improve and grow, and those players that work hard and improve and grow will be, will be given the core time we will play. If it is a younger player who has done so, he will play instead of a veteran and vice versa. Entonces, pues, la mayoría de la gente habla de, de esos jugadores que desde el principio que empecé a entrenar en, en, en primeros equipos, pues como Costa, Jiménez, Villacampa, Montero, Llofresa, eh, Gasol, Navarro, eh, Ricky, Rudy, que son jugadores que partían de la base y llegaron a ser jugadores importantes para la selección española. Todo el mundo habla más de esos, porque es lógicamente los que más se conocen, pero yo estoy muy satisfecho de haber ayudado a muchos otros jugadores que no han llegado a ese nivel, pero que han tenido una progresión mmm, the more well-known names that have passed through Coach García Reyes' hands, such as, for example, Jordi Villacampa, uh, Rafa Jofresa, uh, Kim Costa, Pau Gasol, uh, Rudy Fernández, etc. These are perhaps the more well-known examples that people often talk about. But Coach's satisfaction is also in taking those lesser-known players and helping them to develop and grow with their own particular characteristics and the satisfaction that this also brings. La primera dificultad se puede encontrar con algunos jugadores veteranos que quieren más demostrar lo que lo que saben hacer que no aprender cosas nuevas. Y a mí me va bien que demuestren las cosas que saben hacer pero creo que pierden un poco el tiempo si no son capaces de incorporar alguna cosa más, aunque si saben mucho, pues lógicamente pueden progresar menos. One of the first challenges with more veteran players are those who wish to, from the very beginning, only demonstrate what they already know, which is obviously beneficial or useful, but if they don't have the ability to recognize and to understand that they must also add new facets, new areas to their game to continue to develop and grow, then this will start their overall performance. Entonces, eh, una cosa que se hace en esta pretemporada e, y el, en el inicio de la temporada es pro, eh, programar una defensa individual agresiva. So one of the things that we begin to work on during the preseason is working on our individual defense and having a very aggressive man defense from the very beginning, one on one. Y un ataque libre. And a very open offense. Y esto pues eh, tiene algunos problemas porque la mayoría de las veces nuestras competiciones en los primeros meses tienes que clasificarte para algo, tienes que volver a clasificarte para lo siguiente y si no consigues un muy buen rendimiento porque estás eh, enseñando un poco lo que es toda la base sin demasiado componente táctico, pues podría ser difícil eh, el inicio de temporada. And with this it can cause the start of the season to be somewhat complicated as with most competition systems around the world, in the very beginning you must win, you must progress, you must pass to the next phase of the competition. And so when we're working with our players, and in the beginning we don't wish to go into too much depth with too much detail with the tactical aspects, sometimes this can be uh, a challenge for our team. Sin embargo, eh, en mi experiencia, en el 90% de los casos o más, eh, esa falta de táctica en el principio de la temporada se ve compensada por una actitud eh, superior. However, in my experience, in perhaps 90% of cases, this slight lack of tactical in-depth use is uh, counterbalanced by a will and an intensity of the players to perform. Es cierto que eh, exige un, un, un esfuerzo mental por parte de algunos jugadores veteranos que están acostumbrados a que les utilicen solamente tácticamente. Y entonces, si ellos entran en esa dinámica de querer hacer lo que estamos haciendo, aunque haya pocos componentes tácticos, 
habrá una actitud que no va a durar toda la temporada, pero una actitud que nos va a ayudar mucho a, al principio que aunque seamos menos tácticos que la mayoría de los equipos, tendremos esa actitud superior. This is often also a challenge for the more veteran players who are accustomed to, in the earlier parts of the season, being used or playing inside a, a more tactical system. However, if they are able to buy into the philosophy and at the beginning of the season adapt to the rest of the team and, and bring this aspect of their game, this is an attitude that will help us in the beginning of the season that will not continue throughout the whole season, however will help us get to where we want to get to. In this type of open or free offense, we sometimes may have a very small goal, such as, for example, getting the ball inside. So if we're able to get the ball inside to the low post, from that point, we, we play freely and open. Or, for example, we're going to rotate the ball and set lots of screens away from the ball. Or the same, but with ball screens. So what this means is we're not actually teaching them a specific play or plays, but we're observing them in order to find out what it is that they can do best. Así, cuando necesitemos hacer sistemas, si es que los necesitamos, que casi siempre son necesarios, eh, conocemos mejor a los jugadores, porque una cosa es hacer un scouting de un jugador desde fuera y otra cosa es tenerlo entrenando contigo. Cuando lo tienes entrenando contigo, sabes eh, cómo eh, juega sin balón, cómo eh, pasa, cómo entra, cómo juega el bloque directo, cómo tira, y cuando sabes todo eso, puedes mucho mejor montar un sistema adecuado a las características de esos jugadores que no si desde el principio empezamos haciendo un sistema determinado. The advantage that this brings about is that we are able to learn what strengths and weaknesses each of our players have, so that when it comes time to write up the plays that we wish to run, Instead of drawing plays based on the scouting of a player that we have incorporated for the first time, we will know exactly how he plays. So it is one thing to observe a player before you bring him into your team, and you will have observed certain strengths or weaknesses, but when you have him every day practicing with you, then you'll be able to know exactly how he plays off the ball, how he rebounds, what his back to the basket game is like, etc., etc., and the plays that we draw up for our team will be drawn up specifically based upon the strengths of our different players and not the supposed strengths. Os comentaba que eh, al principio es eh, si, si logran tener esta mentalidad los jugadores, porque hay muchos cada vez más eh, los veteranos que, eh, que cuesta trabajo meterles en esa dinámica, sino que solamente quieren hacer lo que han hecho siempre, pero si les metes en esa dinámica, al principio van a tener una ilusión diferente y una buena actitud, pero esa actitud no dura toda la temporada. Eh, entonces, cuando esa actitud empieza a disminuir, es cuando metemos unos sistemas concretos que nos ayudan. Y luego, esa actitud empieza a mejorar cuando vienen los momentos cubren de la temporada, como son, pues, eh, la Copa del Rey en el caso de España, o, o los playoffs al final de la Liga, o las, o las fases finales de las Copas de Europa. Entonces se compensa. Gran actitud, bajando. Metemos sistemas, subimos. Gran actitud más sistemas, podemos terminar mucho mejor. As we mentioned before, if the players, if the veteran players at the beginning of the season, in pre-season, if they buy into this philosophy, if they buy into this free uh, open motion offense, then this means that we have a, a higher, more energized team player. But it's irrealistic to expect that this will continue throughout the season. 
So at the first moment when this starts to drop, then in order to increase the motivation and interest of the players, that is the time when we introduce our set players. And so that will then give a boost to the veteran players. They will be re-energized and they will have a higher intensity level. This will continue for a period of time. And then when this starts to wane off again, they will become re-energized and more focused on the goals when there are specific objectives in the competition uh, phase that we are in. So for example, in European leagues in February with the National Cup competitions or with the playoffs at the end of the season or with the finishing the last phases of the European club competitions. The players in each occasion will again rise up to the challenge. Another important thing is to do this planification not only but with your players and it may be with your players. Entonces, con tus ayudantes, no todos los perfiles son iguales, porque puede haber algún entrenador que ya tenga tu filosofía y, como es el caso de muchos de los que he tenido, y otros que no tenían mi filosofía, pero que unos tardan un poco más, otros un poco menos, pero acaban teniendo la filosofía. Y entonces yo creo que hay que distinguir pues, entre ese tipo de ayudante que, por ejemplo, es uno que ha estado muchos años conmigo, Joaquín Costa, fue jugador mío en, en el Cotonífice de Badalona, 7 o 8 años. Después fue jugador mío en el Barcelona, eh, también 6 o 7 años. Después fue ayudante mío en el Barcelona, en Barra, en la selección española de Pekín. Entonces, pues es muy diferente eso que si tengo un entrenador ayudante nuevo. Pero es eh, muy interesante, eh, ahora os explicaré cómo, lo primero va a traducir en. Eh, que tengas presente cómo es tu equipo técnico. When planning the preseason, the rest of the season, it's very important not to do this alone, but to do this using the rest of your coaching staff as well, and in some cases, perhaps even incorporating your players. Depending on the type of assistant coaches that you have, they will each bring a different type of philosophy or mindset to the table. So perhaps you'll have an assistant coach who has worked with you for many years and who shares the same philosophy. Or you may have a coach that is brand new for the first time on your staff and will bring a different mindset to the table. So when working with an assistant coach that you're very, very close with, in the case of a uh, coach, for example, Kim Costa, who played with him for Cotonificio for seven or eight years, played another seven or eight years in Barcelona, was his assistant coach at Barcelona, also in Unicaja, with the Spanish national team in Beijing at the 2008 Olympics. It is somebody who for many, many years has shared the same philosophy and has bought into the system. And so how these individuals uh, are brought into planning the season will, will also affect how, how the team are taught. For another part, I also like to have players who start, who start, who start, who start, un paso adelante eh, está un poco conmigo y, y entonces aquí he notado algunas diferencias de unos a otros que decir que algunos se han identificado completamente con, con un estilo eh, prácticamente inmediatamente y otros han intentado varios meses en todos los casos han entendido el estilo y han utilizado el estilo aunque luego cuando más de 10 eh, están entrenando o han estado entrenando en, en equipos de, de élite pues cada uno tiene su propia filosofía pero han adquirido en un tiempo eh, que estuvieron conmigo uno muy rápido y otro más lento una filosofía bastante diferente a la filosofía táctica que utilizan la mayoría It's also very interesting to work with some slightly younger or more uh, fresher inexperienced assistant coaches uh, because they also bring something different to the table. In, on some occasions these younger coaches immediately buy into the philosophy from day one and are entirely comfortable with it and in other cases it may take even a space of months for them to understand. However, without exception, every assistant coach has uh, gone away and has taken and has taken on board the, the coaching philosophy and of the over 10 who are now coaching their own teams at the highest level, 
Each of those obviously has their own personal philosophy, but there are different aspects that they have incorporated since their time working with Coach. Digo esto en relación a las reuniones que tienes que mantener. Tienes que mantener unas reuniones para cómo vas, cómo vas a planificar la pretemporada, cómo vas, vas a planificar eh, el entrenamiento del día, cómo vas a planificar el entrenamiento de la semana, cómo vas a planificar el entrenamiento del mes. Entonces, claro, ese tipo de reuniones, cuando es con un, con un entrenador más joven o lejano a mi filosofía, pues hace falta tener tenerlas programadas muy claramente y reunirte para, para llegar a, a entender perfectamente lo que pretendes hacer. So this is explained in part due to the meetings that are necessary amongst the coaching staff. So when the coaching staff are meeting together to prepare the pre-season, to prepare the season calendar, the season plan, to prepare an individual practice for that day or the rest of the week or the rest of the month, when it's an assistant coach who's perhaps a bit more youthful or less experienced with the same philosophy, it's incredibly important to hold these meetings and to clearly explain the idea and what the goals are for that particular period or that particular practice. Por otra parte, yo no soy muy partidario de, de explicar a los jugadores qué es lo que vamos a hacer, eh, sino hacerlo. Sin embargo, hay algunos jugadores que se les puede, por su interés, que se les puede considerar casi como del cuerpo técnico y entonces sí que es bueno explicarles a ellos lo que pretendemos hacer. In the majority of cases, it's not my philosophy to explain to the players what it is or why it is that we're going to do something, but rather to demonstrate by doing, by, by practicing. However, there are a few exceptions of individual players who, due to their own interest, it's sometimes good to incorporate them and to get them involved and to explain to them the reasons and the motives of why a particular practice will be run the way it will. Uh, entre otras cosas, porque eh, nuestra planificación es muy abierta, porque depende de la capacidad de los jugadores para aprender eh, el que tomemos el siguiente paso, el siguiente paso, el siguiente paso, más rápido o más lento. Entonces está todo muy abierto en función de lo que vamos viendo. Another reason for this is that the practices that we plan and run are very open, depending on how the players react to what we are doing. So our future practices and our future practice plans will evolve and change depending on how quickly or how well our players will assimilate what it is that we're teaching. Sin embargo, sí que es bueno que esa programación abierta, abierta, la tengáis hecha sobre lo que pensáis que podéis hacer en todo el año. Lo que pasa es que luego, pues, puede ser que vayamos por aquí o puede ser que vayamos por aquí. Lo que es seguro es que no iremos por aquí. Pero en función de cómo vayan eh, los jugadores adaptándose, seguiremos así o seguiremos así. Es importante tener un overall path o un overall goal for how the team will be taught over the course of the year. However, perhaps at some times, the way that the players react, instead of a straight line to the goal, we will deviate ever so slightly in a different direction. But what is important is that we will not have a particular goal in mind and then go in a completely different direction, but just have slight adaptations to the path. That does not mean that you don't eh, una programación hecha, pero luego hay que ser flexible con esa programación. Por ejemplo, muchos veranos que iba a Estados Unidos y eh, me invitaban los equipos de, de la NBA, una cosa que solía hacer allí era eh, reunirse a desayunar el equipo técnico y hablaban minuto por minuto lo que iban a hacer en los entrenamientos del día. Y yo estaba allí escuchando las cosas. What's important also, however, is to have the flexibility to be able to adapt. One of the things over many years of being invited by NBA teams to go and spend some time in the summer with them is that they would get together as a coaching staff in the morning for breakfast and go over minute by minute the exact practice plan for the day. Pero, eh, aunque primero hayas eh, programado 10 minutos de ejercicio de contraataque, eh, cinco minutos de ejercicio de defensa, eh, 
15 minutos de ejercicio de pases, pues esos minutos luego no tienen que ser así. Tienen que, eh, lo puedes alargar o acortar en función de cómo están haciendo los jugadores. So, for example, if in a practice you have scheduled to have 10 minutes working on fast break situations, 5 minutes working on defensive situations, 15 minutes working on passing, it's important not to be rigid and stick to these times, but rather to adapt depending on how the players are reacting in each individual section of practice. Un bloqueo directo siempre con dos contra uno. I will start with a specific example. Perhaps we would choose to defend a pick and roll situation, always double teaming the dribbler. De esta forma, el jugador sabe que tiene que aprender a hacer el, el dos contra uno en el bloqueo directo eh, porque vamos a jugar solo con eso. In the beginning, the player may understand from this that the only thing he must learn is to double team the dribbler because this is the only way that we will defend the pick and roll situation. Y además, pues, en esos inicios de la temporada, te vas encontrando otros equipos que ya han hecho el scouting sobre tu equipo y tienen preparado que siempre vas a hacer dos contra uno. And in the beginning of the season, you will play against teams who have done their scouting work on your team and will be prepared to facing your defense where you will always double team every pick and roll situation. So in the beginning with our players, we will not give them alternative ways to defend the pick and roll. We will work with them and encourage them to make sure that every time their defense and their double team of the pick and roll is that much better. Then perhaps a month later we will introduce the ability of the uh, defender of the dribbler to go behind the screen. Y solo pasamos por detrás. And we only defend the pick and roll in that way. Luego combinamos los dos y decimos pues vamos a hacer un tiempo una cosa, otro tiempo otra. Then we begin to combine the two. We spend a period of time working with one way of defending the pick and roll and a period of time working with the second way. Y así vamos añadiendo eh, finta de dos contra uno, defender dando un lado, pero hay un momento en que solo hacemos uno para progresar solo en ese y luego combinamos. Eventually we will introduce other ways. We will fake the double team, we will hedge the screen and roll, etc. But during a period of time, we will always practice and work on only one way in order to uh, perfect the defense. Mientras que los otros equipos están haciendo todo tipo de tácticas. Entonces, eh, tácticamente te ganan, pero tú tienes que ganarles porque realices bien las pocas cosas que haces. At the same time that our team is focusing on the more reduced number of ways to play, for example, the pick and roll, the other teams will have more variants, will have more possibilities in how they play the specific situation, but and will have the upper edge on this. But what is important is that your team has the upper edge in the execution of how they play the situations. Eh, entonces, eh, nosotros hacemos menos cosas, pero intentamos que estén mejor hechas. So we will do less things, but we will always work hard to make sure that they are executed better. Then later in the season, when the, the, the key moments arrive, where perhaps an individual player is not able to execute uh, that particular aspect, even if he's tried very, very hard to do so. Entonces, voy a poner tres ejemplos. Eh, uno más antiguo, que era un jugador español muy alto, su nombre Ferran Martínez, que intentaba hacer el dos contra uno en, en, en cualquier bloqueo directo y no consiguió hacerlo bien. Y luego, además, tardaba mucho tiempo en volver eh, para recuperar. I'll give three practical examples where this is the case. The first is the Spanish uh, fire, the Spanish big man, 
uh, Ferran Martinez, who is a very tall, very wide body, and he would try very, very hard to double team the pick and roll, but no matter how hard he tried, he'd never be able to close off the dribbler, and then recovering back to the paint, he'd always take a very long time. Otro ejemplo es el caso de los jugadores del Barcelona, Boifa Sendón, que tuve en, en Málaga, que también tenía algunas dificultades, no tantas como Ferran, porque era más rápido, pero tenía algunas dificultades para, para hacer el 2 contra 1 y recuperar. Another example would be Boifa Sendón, the also five man playing currently at FC Barcelona, who played Unicaja with coach. He had less trouble because he was slightly more mobile, but he also struggled to double-team the ball and then recover in time back to the paint. Y por último, eh, Joel Ferran, que eh, también he tenido últimamente en el Unicaja, y que mm, tenía en principio las mismas dificultades que los dos jugadores anteriores, pero ha sido capaz de aprenderlo mucho mejor. And the last example would be Joel Freeland, the inside player of Unicaja, who also in the beginning had great difficulty in double teaming the pick and roll uh, on the outside, but however he's been able to learn and improve and is now able to uh, do this and recover in time. Entonces, cuando llegamos a los momentos cumbres de la temporada, cuando ya ellos hemos visto la progresión que han sido capaces de tener, pues con Ferran Martínez hacemos una de cada diez veces dos contra uno, y las otras veces otras defensas. So when we get towards the end of the season and we're playing for championships with players like, for example, Ferran Martinez, the first example, perhaps one out of every ten pick and roll situations we will defend double teaming and the other nine we will defend in a different way. And in the case of Ndong, we were able to, for example, double team on three occasions out of ten. And with Joel Freeland, maybe 50%, 5 out of 10. Because you all know that when you do sufficiently well the defense, it's good to know that the team that attacks doesn't know how to defend it. Because as all of you know, once you reach a point where you are executing very well your different types of defenses, it is very, very beneficial if your opponents do not know and are not able to predict how you will defend. Pero esto no lo hacemos en el primero, segundo, tercer mes, sino que lo hacemos en el último, penúltimo, antepenúltimo mes. But we don't do this in the first, second, or third month of the season. We do this in the last month of the season. We do this in the penultimate month of the season. We do this in the last three months of the season only. Eh, voy a contar dos, dos, dos ejemplos más y luego ya pasamos si queréis a, a que comente lo que queráis para y, y que ellos puedan aclarar lo que no haya quedado claro. Entonces, estos ejemplos son mm, que no solamente ocurre eso en cualquier aspecto. Eh, por ejemplo, pues, eh, hay una actividad defensiva de los jugadores exteriores que tienen que defender a los doses y treses eh, eh, contrarios que sean buenos tiradores y pues, nosotros intentamos pasar bien los bloqueos indirectos, eh, hacer fintas y volver, pero siempre estando atentos a defender a un tirador del equipo contrario. Uh, we'll give a couple more examples before we move on to, to having questions and a discussion with anything that you'd like to say. But in the first case, without players who have to defend the opposing two or three, who are very, very good perimeter shooters, we will work very hard on making sure that our defenders can get through screens, can contest every shot, does not leave the player wide open at any time. This has been, for example, the case of a player who is named Xavi Fernandez, who had a tremendous interest. He was a great player technically in the attack, but defensively he was much more flat. But he had a tremendous interest in learning. But when we were getting to the end of the season, the interest was not sufficient and he couldn't do the type of defense that we had been training all the year. One example of a player who played at FC Barcelona, a, per a perimeter player, Xavi Fernandez, was someone who was incredibly skilled and talented on the offensive end, but who was not as adept on the defensive end. And whilst he showed a great amount of interest, 
in wanting to improve and in trying to improve, when we got to the end of the season, he was not in a position where he was able to defend the perimeter players with the same type of intensity, with the same way that we had been teaching our team. Y cuando llegamos a los playoffs, pues estuvimos preparando y ahí hicimos contra dos equipos similares que en aquel momento eran semifinalista y finalista de la Liga CB, que eran el Estudiantes de Madrid y el Sevilla. Eh, estuvimos haciendo tres jugadores por fuera defendían en zona y dos jugadores por dentro defendían hombre a hombre. Entonces. Eh, ¿Por qué? Pues porque Xavi y algún otro jugador más no habían aprendido a pasar los bloqueos suficientemente, no habían aprendido a hacer fintas de recuperación suficientemente y los equipos contrarios tenían tirado, grandes tiradores y nos quedábamos siempre en la mitad. Por tanto, había que buscar una solución diferente. En este específico ejemplo, al final de la temporada, al final de ese año, en los playoffs españoles y en los semifinales y en los finales, contra dos equipos que tenían muy similares características, que eran estudiantes en Caja San Fernando en ese momento, decidimos defender con nuestros tres jugadores de perímetro en una zona y con nuestros dos jugadores de perímetro defendiendo man a man. La razón por hacerlo fue to obviously close down the opposition's good shooters, but also because Chavi and one or two other players on the team had not, during the course of the season, been able to develop and progress and defend the perimeter in the way that we wanted to. Y el último ejemplo que voy a contar, para que veáis que no es, es inflexible en nosotros, solo defendemos presión hombre a hombre, solo hacemos dos contra uno, sino que hay que tener una cierta flexibilidad. Eh, so another example which also uh, exemplifies the fact that we have to maintain flexibility with our coaching philosophy and not be fixated with only defending man to man or only defending using a zone. Ahora eso lo voy a contar eh, un poco la historia de los títulos de los baloncesto español. En los primeros 30 años el Real Madrid ganó 28 ligas. The, the example will be uh, exposed by talking about the Spanish national championships. In the first 30 years of the league, Real Madrid won 28 titles. Cuando en, en mi etapa en el Barcelona empezamos a ganar el Barcelona en las ligas, llevábamos tres ligas ganadas seguidas. Then when FC Barcelona started to win some titles on the Spanish level, they reached the point where they won three consecutive national titles. En base a defender agresivo, eh, eh, ninguna concesión táctica, sino vamos a jugar fuerte. Based on a very, very aggressive defense and no type of tactical variety, uh, but playing hard basketball throughout. Los jugadores tenían una gran fe en esto porque habíamos dado la vuelta a la historia. The players had bought into this philosophy because we had turned the books on the historical dominance of Real Madrid in the Spanish National Championship. Pero entonces el Real Madrid fichó a Drasen Petrovic y los primeros cinco partidos que jugamos contra ellos nos ganaron. Perdimos en la Liga, perdimos en un torneo, perdimos en la Copa del Rey, 5-0. Perdiendo cuando nosotros habíamos ganado las tres ligas anteriores, porque no podíamos defender a Petrovic. After winning the three straight national titles, Real Madrid signed the Croatian player Drazan Petrovic. And in the beginning of the season, Real Madrid won five consecutive games across different competitions against FC Barcelona because of the inability to defend Petrovic. Entonces, eh, los últimos dos meses de competición de liga regular empezamos a entrenar eh, tanto técnicamente como mentalmente una defensa de box and goal. In the last two months of the season we began to practice both on the court during practice time as well as mentally the introduction of a box and one defense. Mm, eh, psicológicamente era muy difícil para nosotros porque no tanto la defensa individual, pero sí la defensa de zona. Si ya en la defensa de zona hay muchos espacios libres, cuando solo son cuatro en zona y no tienes fe en la zona, 
pues hay, ves mucho más espacio. This was mentally challenging for some of our players because any time you play a zone defense, you generally tend to leave a lot of open spaces on the court. And so when you're playing a zone defense with only four players in a box, you're leaving even more space wide open. Y era verdad que cuando utilizamos el box and one en el playoff final con el Real Madrid, Petrovic en 20 minutos recibió dos balones, pero el resto de jugadores metieron muchos puntos. It's true that when we first started to use the box and one in the playoff finals against Madrid, that in the first 20 minutes, Petrovic only touched the ball twice. However, his teammates were scoring many, many points. Normalmente, eh, a nosotros, cuando defendíamos individualmente, Petrovic nos metía 30 puntos o más. Normally, when we were playing a straight up man and defending individually, Petrovic would usually score over 30 points a game. Eh, no solo eso, sino que cuando ya te quedabas mirando a ver lo que hacía Petri, tu hombre metía una canasta solo debajo, debajo del aro, pues muchas veces porque ya estaba solo pendiente de Petrovic. No solo esto, pero los defensores que defendían a Petrovic's teammates would be overly worried or preoccupied about what Petrovic was doing, and so their man would score an easy basket whilst they were paying too much attention to Petrovic. En la final de la Recopa, eh, que creo que fue en, en Atenas, in the European uh, Cup Winners Cup final, Petrovic scored 63 points that season. And against Barcelona, he scored two or four points. Esto significa que esta vez actuamos tácticamente, porque no podíamos con lo que nosotros estábamos acostumbrados a hacer, actuamos tácticamente y al Madrid le cambiaron los esquemas de tener que meter muchos puntos Petrovic a meter pocos puntos las empresas. In that particular example, we changed our scheme and we did we because we were unable to apply our philosophy to players we would normally play and be successful at that point. So we adapted tactically in order to cancel out Petrovic and force Madrid to change their approach to the game, where they were accustomed to Petrovic scoring many, many points, and they had to adapt to a situation where he was scoring very few points. Por supuesto que hay más excepciones, pero eh, lo que quiero que quede claro es que eh, nuestra planificación de entrenamientos es entrenamientos para mejorar, y no entrenamientos para solo hacer táctica. So whilst there are many different approaches that are possible, what I want to re-emphasize is our approach when it comes to practice planning is not practicing something for pure tactical reasons, but practicing with the aim of developing the team. And so with that, we now open the floor to questions. Uh, as stated earlier, if you can please Grab Goran's attention or raise your hand so that we can all hear the question uh, that you had. So, one more thing. Hello, I want to be, if you have a question, please stand up, state your name, maybe your country where you're from, so that Coach Aito gets to know you guys a little better too. Who's first? If anybody's fallen asleep, it's very early, it's only the first session. <laughs> Nobody? when he first took the national coaching certification here in Spain. Había un entrenador que daba las clases y era Pedro Fernández y daba dirección de equipo. There was a, a professor, a lecturer, whose name was Pedro Ferrandi, a uh, former Spanish coach, and he was giving a lecture on uh, the management of a team. Él tenía una clase de una hora y habló tres minutos. He had a session which was scheduled to last for one hour and he spoke for a total of three minutes. Si 
había alguna pregunta. Nadie habló y dijo, pues si lo sabéis todo, ya lo veremos en el examen. After three minutes, he asked if people had any questions. As could be expected, nobody asked any questions. And so his response was, if you already know everything there is to know, we will see if that is the case in the final exam. And he left. <laughs> You're lucky there's no exam here this weekend. Okay, we have a question in the middle. Hi, Coach. Uh, my name is Tyler Gatlin. I'm from the USA, from Texas. Uh, my question is, when you're involved in developmental leagues, uh, such as the NBA D League or lower level uh, European leagues, how do you balance the team goals when individual players have the mindset of wanting to advance to the NBA or to the higher level. So sometimes it's difficult because certain players have aspirations to advance their career, but at the same time, a coach is trying to build a team and have togetherness and camaraderie and everything that you spoke about. Un mayor relieve, eh, 
What's important is, as well as having the coaching staff on the same page and, and, and buying into the philosophy, is that the players themselves and all of the players also do this. And so when faced with players like this, it's important to have a couple of more veteran players perhaps, who not only are working on uh, developing and doing what's being asked of them in individual situations, in tactical situations, etc., but that they are also working very, very hard in communicating with the rest of their teammates to ensure that the players themselves buy into the same philosophy of growing and developing their entire game and not just of developing individual aspects that perhaps might be something that will increase their uh, draftability, will increase their potential uh, if they wish to go to the next stage, if they wish to progress somewhere else. And so in the, in the, in the same example with Ricky and, and Rudy, Guys like Elmer Bennett or Paco Vazquez, who were their teammates, were, were very good at helping uh, this to, to occur within the team. Entonces, eh, por seguir con estos dos ejemplos, yo prefiero jugadores que tengan ambición, aunque puedan tener este defecto. In continuing with the same example mentioned, I much rather coach players who have ambition, who are hungry, uh, and, and, and yet also have this type of mentality. Y vamos a, a poner otra diferencia. En el caso de Rick Rubio, mmm, ha sido todo mucho más fácil porque mentalmente siempre estaba predispuesto. Y entonces casi no ha hecho falta el hacer un esfuerzo en ese terreno. En el caso de Ricky Rubio, it's never been a challenge because his development, his progress over the last six, seven years has always been progressive due to his hunger and his willingness and his mental approach to putting in the effort. Sin embargo, eh, con Rudy, que tiene una gran intuición para jugar, mm, ha sido más difícil. Quizá porque su entorno pues, mm, era más difícil para él. ¿no? Y entonces ahí hemos tenido que eh, luchar no solamente mis ayudantes y yo, sino todo el equipo. Y no hablo solo de Bennett y Paco Vázquez, sino todos. Y ahora mismo recuerdo una anécdota que voy a contar cuando he estado buscando. And in the case of, for example, Rudy Fernandez, it was slightly more challenging. Not because of his talent level, because Rudy has an incredibly high basketball IQ, but perhaps because of the environment and the people that Rudy had around him, it meant it was a little more difficult for him to progress in the same way. So in that situation, that is where his teammates, and not only the more veteran teammates like Elmer Bennett or Paco Vazquez, but every single one of his teammates were very important and very necessary to bring him along and to help him develop. Eh, un día, en el medio de un entrenamiento, eh, me acerco hacia donde estaban los directivos, en el caso concreto era el médico del equipo, y, y le digo, él cree todo. Y le digo, Rudy está escribiendo un libro. So one day in the middle of practice, I moved over to the side of the court where there were some of our front office staff were sat. And, and I spoke to our team doctor. And our team doctor is someone who at the time, he, uh, he would believe everything you told him. So I said to him, uh, Rudy is writing a book. Entonces me pregunta, ¿qué libro? Y yo le contesto, The World Against Me. So, <laughs> so, um, so he asked me, uh, what type of book? And my reply was, the title of the book, is the world against me. Eso que significa? Pues que eh, no solamente los entrenadores y los jugadores más significativos del equipo, sino los directivos, el médico, todo el mundo ayudaba para meter a un jugador en la dinámica. Y se le metió al jugador en la dinámica. So what this demonstrates is that it's not just the coaching staff, it's not just the teammates, the players, it's the other front office staff in the team, it's the medical team, it's the support staff, it's everybody that together are working to try and help bring this player into the general dynamic, into the general philosophy of the team. Which we were successful with in that case. Any other questions? Well, 
Okay, we'll take a, a short break. Um, we're running a little bit ahead of schedule, so it's now 18.45.